Hiya artists, I'm Tira, she, they, and I'm an eco artisan in Wichita, Kansas, where I make my own art supplies. Let's get started. Be prepared to add another page in our journal. This is Paint With Me 2023 reading list, art prompt 160. Supplies include a Sharpie thin pen, a pencil, an eraser, a round brush, watercolor paper, watercolors, water, and a ruler, but it is not necessary. If you like this content, please feel free to subscribe on YouTube. And if you want more, this art prompt comes from my weekly art prompts on Patreon. Patrons do receive coupons, behind the scene content, first access to new products, live paint with me videos, monthly art boxes, and so much more. I'm literally not kidding. We also have a Discord and I would love for you to join the art community. Back to this painting. Always best to start off with a sketch. For my reading page, I wanted to represent my bookshelf. I had read 37 books in 2022 without really counting or pushing myself, so for 2023, I decided to push it to 50. I might have a little bit much on my plate, but that's totally fine. Let's keep going. The quick marks here help guide me for the placements of where I'm going to put the books. I didn't want my shelves to look uniform because I really love a good messy bookshelf and as time goes on I'm going to add little details to each of these books when I finish reading them. By the time that I made this video I have already read five books and I'm currently working on a sixth one. While we are sketching here are the top 10 books that I love and could not get enough of in no particular order in the ratings that I gave them. I am no expert but I did really want to share what I love. Iron Widow is an LGBTQIA plus friendly book and it's literally so good, it's fantastic. It has a very strong, powerful woman main character, an incredible world building with ancient Chinese culture mixed with future technology, and a literal love triangle. Triangle is the strongest shape after all. Trigger warning though, there is sexual bath salts and abuse mentioned. Five out of five sparkles. All the Light We Cannot See follows a blind French girl, a German boy, and a Nazi soldier who live very far from one another. The story of these three lives are so entwined, you can see they will all eventually collide, but the slow burn into chaos is so hauntingly beautiful. I never knew what was going to happen and I was anxious, crying, and throwing up the entire time. Trigger warning, there is sexual bath salts. Three out of two suits. How High We Go in the Dark is about how humanity is wrecked from a global pandemic. Sounds familiar? This was actually written before COVID. It goes into several different stories that describe how humanity survives before, during, and after this pandemic, but not in that order. It's so devastating and yet the amount of hope it gives is chilling. 10 million out of 14 moons. I, I really, 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 really love this book and highly recommend it. The Bone Witch and the Heart Forger. I've been slowly reading the third book because I just know it's gonna wreck me and I'm gonna need an entire weekend to recover. The Bone Witch follows a girl that is discovered to have necromancy abilities. In this world, there's a magical woman society in a war against hidden horrors and a beautiful ancient cultural customs. This girl is known as a new Bone Witch, but unsettling things are brewing. In the second book, she finds out something that changes the course of everything she understands to be true. She's casted out of her kingdom, branded, and told she will be killed for knowing what she must do in order to right wrongs. Eight out of three hearts, both books. This next one comes with a trigger warning of unaliving and suicidal thoughts and actions. I will have a little skip part if you wanted to skip it. This close to okay follows a scene of bravery between a woman and a man who meet in the rain on a bridge as a man tries to say goodnight to life. She convinces him to stay with her that night and so begins the story of being so open with a stranger that you can't help but want things to work out for both of them. They continue to tell lies to one another and tell truths that they have never told to anyone else. Seven out of two pine cones. One, two, three. Follow along as triplet sisters use their individualistic skill sets created from their personalities and life experiences in order to uncover a past of returning corporation that has caused its small town citizens sickness and unaliving. It sounds like a lot, but it's so good. You read as one, Mab, who's overachieving, trying to get out of her small dying town. Two, Monday, who is assumed but not confirmed to have autism and loves everything yellow in the library. And three, Mirabel, who's incredibly intelligent and resourceful in a world built against her physical disabilities. The love of these sisters is powerful and so moving when everyone feels against them. Three out of three yellow bananas. Hidden pictures. All OMG, this book is wild. So we did this for our book club, um, but we found out very quickly that this book, you kind of have to have a physical copy of it instead of like listening to an audiobook because of what's contained in the story. The actual book contains incredible images from a child drawing them. I love the thriller, and this book was not easy to guess. I was still guessing what was actually happening behind the scenes until the end, and the ending was still not what I expected. Four out of three biscuits. 
The 100 Years of Lenny and Margot. This book wrecked me. I could not stop listening to this. I think I listened to this in a day and a half. We meet Lenny, who is a 17-year-old terminal cancer patient. She is a strong force to be reckoned with and will not take no for an answer. While looking to join a painting class, she meets Margot, an 83-year-old woman who tells Lenny stories of her life that Lenny can live through vicariously. Then start the painting series, 100 Years of Lenny and Margot. Each story of their life is depicted in different paintings, and we get to learn about Lenny and Margot's lives. This entire book is so beautifully written, and it gives such a wonderful perspective on life while accepting that there are just some things that we can't change. A hundred paintings out of two fickle creatures. A Discovery of Witches. This book took me by surprise. I was not sure how I'd feel about another witch book as I had just read a couple of them and some were actually starting to feel a little of the same. However, this one broke the surface with adding vampires, demons, and other creatures of all kinds whom were looking for a manuscript that tells the beginning of all and why they were created. After stumbling upon this book, our main character, a non-active witch, accidentally releases power from this book that alerts surrounding creatures to its general location. She quickly returns it to the shelf and tries to go back to living her normal life as a professor. However, of course, nothing will go back to normal when she runs into a vampire that has been searching for this manuscript for centuries. 9.7 out of 6 mana. The five books that I've read so far this year include The Book of Life, which is the third book to A Discovery of Witches, and I literally cannot tell you anything without there being spoilers, so I will just say keep reading if you like the first and second book. Then I read Ready Player One and Two. After reading the first book, I say this with great care because it's always the opposite for me, but I actually like the movie better. The book felt a little too playful for the stakes that the characters went through, and I can understand why the movie overhauled the majority of the book, because some of the challenges they to receive the keys just didn't really make sense together. However, after the second book, I can see that they won't be able to make a movie because the storyline is too far off from the first book. I really, really like the second book because of the issues that it addresses with famine, our sense of reality, and dwindling finite resources. Our beloved characters get thrown into the forefront of addressing these issues along with our newly owned multi-billion, multi-trillion dollar company, and one mistake almost destroys it all. The fourth book I read this year was The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, and the movie is so freaking on the mark, I could not believe it. Minor changes, of course, but with how short this book was and how expansive the universe is, it's so fun to listen to the journey and thoughts of our main characters as they unwillingly hitchhike across the galaxy in pursuit of something greater. Lastly, I recently finished I'm Glad My Mom Died and just... wow. Jeanette McCurdy brings us along her incredible journey from her childhood to adulthood and her reconnection of what it means to be okay. Trigger warnings, though, there is sexual abuse, financial abuse, child abuse, mental health descriptions, bulimia, and essentially just read with caution. It is a powerful read, and the audiobook is read by Jeanette McCurdy herself. Whew! Who knew we were going to be talking about 15 books today? R.I.P. your Goodreads list. After discussing my reading list from 2022 and what I've read so far in 2023, let's paint! I wanted the bookshelf to have really neutral tones, so I painted with burnt sienna. I will eventually paint the background on the shelf with burnt umber, and I think the paint in the background of the painting is going to be with yellow ochre, but I haven't completely finished that thought. Since this is an ongoing painting, I'm not too worried about finishing it because I plan to come back and paint every book once I finish that. First, look at this! Ooh, so smooth! Very, very solid lines. The watercolors seen here are made by hand, and you can see the process through live streams on Twitch in the description below. This is um, Ercolano Orange, but I actually also use Burnt Sienna, Yellow Ochre, Light Sienna, and Burnt Umber. Here I'm using Pistachio. A couple weeks after filming this, I finished three more books, so here you can see I painted them additional colors, and I labeled the books with the titles. I want to add embellishments, but I think I'll wait until all my books are painted because I've got an idea I want to try out. I have quite a few books on my list to read, but I want to hear from you. Please comment on what your reading list is for 2023 and let me know what book you couldn't put down. Thank you so much for hanging out with me as I talk about books. I hope you loved painting a bookshelf with me and I wish you a wonderful day. Please remember to press the all the buttons and if you want to see other Patreon art prompts, be sure to go to the description below. Bye and happy painting! Pro tip, if you accidentally bleed or scrape a light color as seen here with the discolorations, add little droplets of water, let soak for about 10 seconds, and then wipe away with a cloth. Repeat until gone. Now, it won't work for all colors, but it can save some of your paintings. See that difference!